Hi, I'm Mimi Lesios, and you've tuned in to my channel on YouTube and podcast. It's called Staying Alive with Mimi Lesios. I am so blessed that you tuned in. Thank you so very much. This particular episode is about being vulnerable. It's okay to be vulnerable. I never thought it was. I always thought it was a weak thing for me to show my uh, scared little Mimi side or, uh, you know, just, you know, things that I didn't know. I didn't want to show that I was vulnerable and didn't know it. So I always had to hide behind the tough and um, uh, brave Mimi. <clears throat> but Mimi wasn't always that way. Mimi had a hard life growing up and my life, let me just give you a little bit of background. I grew up in Silver Lake and I'm the baby of five. My mother was Mexican and uh, my father was Greek. I um, uh, had brothers and sisters who were in a gang called 18th Street and my mother also participated in the gang 18th Street. <laughs> Uh, yay for Silver Lake and yay for Mexicanos. Um, I uh, learned at a very early age that that wasn't for me. I respect it. I love it. I love my oldies. I love my slow dancing. I love my, my cholos. I love my cholas. I love my uh, Latinos. You know, it's just, it's embedded in me. It's in my heart. But as a young girl, I absolutely didn't want that because it was thrown in my face. And um, I lived next to uh, an alley called Blood Alley and my whole entire property lined up against Blood Alley. And it was called Blood Alley because all the gangs they would come and they would fight and they would bring bumper jacks and they would bring knives and they would bring, uh, you know, broken bottles and they would bring so many different things and they would fight it out right there, right at my house. And um, my brothers and sisters obviously participated and, um, and my mother, I remember my mother, because she could, because she was a badass woman, they called her... Uh, they they called her Crazy Mary or Mamacita, you know. So she, I remember they would have these gang fights in the alley, and she would come out with a water hose and water them down. Get the fuck out of here! That was my mom. <laughs> she was pretty funny, actually. But, you know, there was a lot of um, uh, gang uh, parties at my house and a lot of drugs and a lot of PCP and a lot of quaaludes and a lot of oh my god everything and I was just a little teeny girl seeing all this stuff and growing up I didn't really want to be in that scene I just even in junior high school I remember wanting to be a surfer I didn't know how to surf I didn't know how to you know do any of that but I wanted to so badly because I would watch all these shows and uh, it was something that I wanted to be different, you know, I, I wanted to get out of the poverty, gang life, you know, the, the, the something that was, um, I wasn't in a gang, but my family and everything around me was. Um, and so being brave and tough was always instilled in me. Always I had to be you know, the, the, the person that was not scared. And let me tell you, I was the scared little Mimi. I always, always was afraid of so many different things. And I was cold and I was hungry and I was afraid to even tell my mom because she would beat the shit out of us if we even got hurt. If we even told her a, a story that we fell or did something, she would hit us. That was that was my mom, and not just hit us like, ah, spanky, spanky. She was a Latino mom. And she would hit us with, I saw my brother got, you know, the broomstick broken over his back many times, and, and uh, cause I was the little one, I didn't get 
hit that much, but you know, I got electrical cords whipped across my leg and chanclas, you know, which is, you know, the open toe shoes, whack! And not just that, but I mean, her high heels and there's so many ding dang things. She would, they would use spatulas and wooden spoons and, and anything, anything that was around. My mother, her famous thing <laughs> was she would get pissed off and there would be a stack of dishes. She would just drop them and say, okay, now you kids pick it up. I'm like, man, not again. What the hell? And then here comes the shoe. <laughs> you know, it was quite uh, interesting growing up because um, back then it was all about kids need to be seen and not heard. That was the motto. That was my mother telling us, you need to be seen and not heard. Ever. Ever. So, you know, growing up I had to be very brave and I had to be strong and, and to show the scared, vulnerable little Mimi was not in my cards. And I always thought that was a weak thing and that that was something that, um, you know, made me look uh, not strong. And I always strive to be the strong Mimi and the take care of it kind of Mimi. And as I grew up and I left when I was 16 years old, left my house, said, get me the fuck out of there. And, you know, uh, leaving my house, uh, you had to find a job and you had to find an apartment and you had to find things, you know, to live as an adult if you're going to leave. Well, it wasn't like I had to ask my parents if I could leave. My mom and dad got divorced when I was five. My mom went in a wild, crazy spree. All my brothers and sisters, they got the fuck out of there. And then I was the last one left and my mom, there was nobody to watch me. So it, I don't even know if she noticed if I left or not. <laughs> but, um, you know, it becomes a survival kind of a thing. You know, you're, you're young and you're pretty and you're sexy and you don't even know what sexy is. But at that age, you're trying to be somebody. And you're trying to show the world, like me, like me, please like me. So you're pleasing in so many different ways. And that's what I was, I was a big pleaser, you know. And, and I tried to find different uh, families that I could connect to. Not, just, not families, but different, you know, cliques. Uh, I, I had so many different cliques that I grabbed onto and I considered them family, you know, because they were there and they listened to me and I listened to their stories and, and we were kind of similar, you know, we grew up similar and, um, and you know, they liked to go out as I did and we all grew up in Hollywood and it's, it's really tough to pull out the scared little kid in you because you're suppressing it down. And that's what I did. You know, being vulnerable w was not a thing in my life. But then when I hit my 20s, I was all about pleasing people and, and let me, you know, dress this way and let me act this way and let me go to this group and that group. And, and it was all about you know, not really finding who I was. And then in my 30s, it, you know, I started making a lot of movies and, and I was doing a lot of wrestling and, and I was doing a lot of fighting and I was traveling around the world. And I started becoming um, uh, somebody who was breaking out of her little scared shell and somebody who was being okay with herself. You know, but I still was suppressing where I came from. You know, I think I was trying to say, oh, I was just born uh, when I became 25 or something like that. It was crazy. Um, you know, because you don't want to bring out the hurt and all the pain that came from uh, your childhood. But then I started to learn that it's okay. 
and that's who you are. And and it's not about the pain and you, you don't live in your present saying, I'm all about my pain. That's not what life is supposed to be. Well, that's what I figured out. I didn't know that. I didn't know, you know, that it's it was okay to be who I was, which was an outcast, which was the crazy Mimi, you know, which was the Mimi who wanted to explore the world and the Mimi who wanted to meet everybody and the Mimi where everything was okay. As in everything's okay, I accepted everything. I'm from Silver Lake and, you know, that was, a, when I was growing up, that was an area of gang members and gays. And, and it, funny mixture, but it was. And I grew up with accepting everything and everybody and everything is okay. You know, my mom, she was into everything, everything and anything. That's who my mom was, and that's who raised me as a single mother. Um, so, you know, trying to be the tough, strong Mimi who, you know, got herself out of the water and pulled herself up, you know, with that rope and, and you know, just swung out of the water and landed on my feet. Um, you know, you have to be... You have to be uh, strong and put up that wall. And that's what I did for so many years until I started realizing that I don't really care what people think about me. And that was kind of in my 40s then. And, you know, it was a shame that I, it took that long to understand myself and to understand that these people are not paying my bills. These people are not running my life. These people are not in my house. These people who are judging me and who want me to be a certain way, um, and I'm being a certain way because I don't want to be judged by all the society, I started realizing that um, it doesn't matter and they're not important. They're small. They're very, very small, um, you know, little seeds in my life. I have so much more that is important. And I began to accept myself of who I am and what I've been through and how I love myself and how I became uh, the person who I became is because I started accepting myself. And I said, you know what, you came from a certain place, with, from a certain family, and that had nothing to do with my self-love. And you guys, you know, out there who are doubting yourself because you came from a certain location or a certain family and, and they were not achievers and they never amounted to anything and they were into drugs and blah, 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 that's not you. It wasn't me. I broke the chain. I broke that chain. And I reached for the heavens. That's what I did. This is my book. I broke the chain and I reached for the heavens. And if you want to know all about my life story and how I came into, you know, breaking that chain, because so many people in life, they go, <clears throat> they go, uh, you know, through life saying, I was born into this family and I was born into this situation and my mom and my grandpa and my great grandpa and they were all drunks and they all did this and they were all rapists and I do it and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? That's not you. You can break your chain and I did. And I showed my vulnerable side to people and it was okay. I didn't have to be scared and I didn't have to suppress little Mimi anymore. And I didn't have to hide that scared little girl because I allowed that scared little girl to come up and say, okay, little Mimi, you come up and I will protect you. And that's what I did. And I 
showed the world that I am this eccentric kind of crazy Mimi who likes to do all kinds of, you know, crazy things and not so crazy things. You know, I like to protect this whole entire um, way of living because if you don't, call it bohemian, call it, you know, open-minded, call it whatever you want, but I think that everybody should be who they are and everybody should accept them as they are. You know, I mean, it is so... Um, uh, freeing and so wonderful to be able to wear leather and be all fucking tough and be whatever and then to wear a cute little white frilly dress and and be the woman and girl that that is in me you know it's just and and without judgment because there's so many people who are, who are out there who judge me and who judge you and who judge this world but why don't all those, those people who judge, all the haters, turn around and look at yourself and see what you're looking at. Are you perfect? Or what is a perfect person? So if somebody's a little bit off and they look a little bit, you know, uh, uh, not what you expect, you know, to be perfect, and they're a little sexy or they're a little tough and they're a little whatever, don't judge them. It's not up to anybody to judge anybody. So that's how I, um, you know, am so proud to be vulnerable. I'm being vulnerable to you right now. I let you know what my, you know, little girl Mimi grew up how I grew up and how I came up to be this this woman that I am now. You know, it's okay for you to be vulnerable. Do it. To be vulnerable is is to be enlightened. To me that is the light. Because you're looking at your scared little self and you're looking at yourself where it you know you've always wanted to suppress that and you shouldn't because who cares what people think of you they are not running your life and they are not you thank you so much for listening i'm mimi lesios and i'm so blessed to have you listen to this episode being vulnerable it's okay it's a good thing god bless you god bless your family God bless all your friends and live what makes you feel alive. Staying alive with Mimi Lesios. That's what it is.